Hey you guys, Matt Allen, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bass and today we are out in Tennessee. We're on Lake Chickamauga and there are fish in all stages. There are post spawn fish that are almost done chasing shad on the shad spawn going into full summer patterns. There are still fish up on beds. There's sight fishing going on out here. So we're going to go out and try and get on a reaction bite. Throw a crankbait, throw a topwater, a spinnerbait, a chatterbait. See what happens and adapt as we go. Come along. Knowing where to start on a body of water like this is incredibly overwhelming. To put this in perspective for you guys, you know, we get questions every day about where to fish on a certain lake. You know, somebody will send us a map and ask our opinions, that sort of a thing. We are thousands of miles from home, dropped in on a giant lake. We haven't talked to anybody. All we know is what we see, which is water temperature, which is ranging from the high 60s to low 70s. That gives us a lot of clues. But other than that, we are just dropped in here. So how do you break it down? Where do you start? It's why we picked up reaction baits. Our first stop is essentially a, a long tapering, shallow, hard bottom point at the entrance to a creek arm. The idea is that as fish are coming and going, post spawn fish coming out, we're going to run into them there. We have not been bit. So I think now we'll probably adapt. We could go out onto ledges and do the deep water thing, it would work. But that's a bigger animal. That takes a lot more time on the electronics. We have our families with us. They're back at the truck. So we're not gonna be out here too long today. So instead of taking that on, I think we'll probably, we'll talk about it, but I think we'll probably head up a creek arm, start looking for shallow water fish that are still up there, whether they're spawners or post spawners in there to feed or in there to spawn. Regardless, that's probably the approach we'll take since this outside thing didn't work right away. We'll see. All right, so we just transitioned to the back of this, this cove. We're gonna come back here and we're gonna fish our way in. Water's up, a lot of over low overhanging debris. So we're gonna frog and uh, fish some Senkos, maybe do a little flipping. Once we get in the back, maybe we see some clear water and look for some, some uh, spawning fish. But uh, hopefully we can, uh, get to back here to this clear water and see some of these fish. <laughs> I'm not sure that poor fish knew what hit him. <laughs> Little Chickamauga bass. He choked that Kiara. We're on the board. That's a start. We'll take it. There's a little light spot. I threw the frog over it and a fish popped up. I think it's a bed. That's a nice fish. Oh man. That's a tank.
Push the Nice. <laughs> well, that'll do. Little upgrade from our first Chickamauga bass. Awesome. What a fish, short and just thick. Yep. That's built like a fish from back home. Beautiful. So Tim was flipping a jig in there. And this fish was just kind of doing laps around. Oh man, what a fish. Look how thick that fish is. All right, let's get her back in the water. There you go, girl. So what was happening there, Tim was throwing a jig. We can barely see, it's maybe 12 to 18 inches of visibility. There was a light spot and as we were coming by, the male must have hit her, the female rolled, and I saw the flash. So Tim was throwing a jig up there, and the fish was just sort of doing laps around it. So while he was still going, I sat down and I rigged up. This is that uh, that big bite squirrel tail, that little creature bait. Same one we were throwing in the Delta, I don't know, a month or two ago. But I set it up on just a shorty little drop shot rig because she's right up underneath a tree. So every time Tim was going in there with a jig, you know, a couple hops, he's off the bed. So I thought I could get this in there and I could get some movement out of it without leaving the bed. And that lit, was that the first cast? Oh, well, it was the first. It was either the first or second. second cast. That fish, I pitched it in there and she kind of circled around and then just set up and looked at it. And I would just hop it and let it sit, hop it and let it sit. So I was getting the action of a creature bait without going anywhere. And it worked. Awesome. Oh. <laughs> Saw that fish. Rolled over. I don't think that fish knew what hit him. <sighs> he hammered that hook set. That bass tipped through up here in like a foot of water hook set and that fish just completely rolled over but came off. Brutal. That was a tough one. Nice little guy. Hate that frog again. Seems like we've got a pattern going. I don't know that we're on something wide open, but they're willing to eat the frog. They're willing to eat a Senko pitched in there slow. Tim's trying to spinner bait now. You know, we've only seen a couple of bed fish. We got that big one, but building a pattern is key. Then, even though we're on this lake that has a thousand spots that look like this, you don't feel like you're scrambling. You know, you're looking for something specific and you're running that pattern. It's a lot easier to feel connected and like you've got some direction going. We'll just keep trucking along in here, try and catch some more fish. Got bit by a critter with teeth. Bit me right <laughs> off. <laughs> we don't have those at home. No. Brutal. 
That was cool. So far, this is how my day is going. <laughs> Finally got one to stick. Quick release. That one meant business. Ooh. That guy ate that frog like he knew what he was doing. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Hello. I got a good one. Ate that uh, Tamiki popper. Been, I've been working it really quickly. You know, Matt's kind of working, walking that frog. He's able to throw back in deep into this stuff. So I started just, I threw down the channel of this creek and just ploop, ploop. We just started working it really slow and this thing just came up and smashed it. Finally got a good one in the boat. Well, not the biggest bass we've ever ended a video on, but I think we'll end it there. This was a lot of fun. I can't even tell you the name of where we are right now. We're in some creek amongst dozens and dozens of creeks that look just like it on a map. Yeah. You know, guys, we started this off thinking reaction, right? We were going to throw a chatterbait, a spinnerbait, a crankbait on outside stuff. And we tried that pattern and didn't see them. So we thought, all right, let's 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 tuck back in. And lo and behold, here are the fish. Now I'm sure, again, there are fish out there. I'm sure we could build a pattern there too. But it's all about adapting. We don't need 12 different patterns. We're just here today. We just needed to catch fish. We weren't even trying to catch a big one. We just wanted to catch fish. We were blessed with an extra big one. That was awesome. Uh, but again, building patterns, and it's not about spots. I don't even know the name of where I am. It's not a spot. It just fit the bill. It was a shallow backwater area where if there were fish up shallow, still spawning or feeding around grass, it seemed like a logical place. I'm confident, based on the number of bites we got in here on the frog and the senko and bedfish, that we could go to one of dozens of other creeks and repeat this over and over and over. And I hope that you guys, more than just, hey, we're on Chickamauga catching fish today, you can take that piece of it 
and apply it to your own water. Now, of course, we'll link all the gear down in the video description. If you want to see what that little frog was, you know that KR, we talk about it all the time. I went with a little frog because I didn't know if there was a frog bite and I didn't know what the size of fish would be. And I thought my odds of getting one to commit to that small frog to tell me whether or not there was a bite was higher than going with a bigger frog. So we'll link you all the gear like we always do, but hopefully you guys had a lot of fun coming along with us. We had a blast. It was a grinder. We had to piece it together, but that's the fun part. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.